9. Won't discover a shipwreck Built in 1974, the German-built cruise ship MS World Discoverer was designed to withstand frigid Arctic conditions and was capable of navigating through much of the icy Northwestern Passage. Occasionally, the ship even went on Antarctic cruises. Yet the durable vessel unexpectedly met its end when it struck an uncharted reef near the Solomon Islands back in 2000. Thankfully, a ferry responded to the captain's distress signal and all passengers were evacuated safely. The ship began to list, so the captain grounded it in Roderick Bay to prevent it from sinking but it was ultimately deemed a loss. The World Discoverer has sat, neglected, and slowly sinking in Roderick Bay ever since. It's almost entirely laying on its side and will eventually be completely underwater. The heavily damaged ship is rusting out and missing several windows. Over the years, several companies have tried to salvage the World Discoverer, but they found that on top of being damaged by the harsh hands of Mother Nature, it was ransacked by locals during a violent civil war and there was simply no saving it. The wreck will eventually slip completely beneath the water surface, but it remains visible for now and can also be seen on Google Earth. 8. Freshly dug graves in Ukraine Fighting in the Ukrainian port city of Maripol stopped after Russia captured it in late May, yet satellite images show that the number of graves in Maripol seems to be increasing. Investigators from the UK-based Center for Information Resilience CIR, recently determined that around 1,400 new grave sites appeared in Maripol between May 12th and June 29th of this year. They estimate that five times more graves are being dug each month than before Russia invaded the country, totaling 3,100 burials since the war began. Many of them are mass graves, with some containing thousands of bodies. CIR Director of Investigations Benjamin Strick described the finding as a stark illustration on the civilian death toll following the Russian invasion. The shocking increase in graves after the city's capture may be the bodies of some of the 22,000 or more people who died during the fighting, many of which are being found beneath destroyed buildings. Very little is known about what's going on in Maripol, where the remaining 90,000 residents have been largely cut off from the outside world and have little access to cell phone service and the internet. They're also living with extremely limited access to electricity, healthcare, and even water. 7. The Great Wall's Northern Line in 2020, archaeologists used high-resolution satellite and drone imagery to map a section of the Great Wall of China, known as the Northern Line or Genghis Khan's Wall. Constructed between the 11th and 13th centuries, the 460-mile long runs along the Mongolian steppe and parts of Russia and China. A study of the images found that it was built to prevent raids and to monitor the movement of nomadic people and their herds. The Khitan Lao Empire also used the wall to expand its influence on the region's nomads. Based on the findings, lead study author Gideon Shelaglavi suggested that experts should rethink their long-held belief that the Northern Line and other similar walls were built exclusively for military defense. He noted the importance of studying these structures and their context to better understand the reasons they were built. The research determined that the Northern Line was likely built in a single organized phase, as evidenced by 72 structures discovered alongside it, arranged in small clusters that are roughly 19 miles, 30 kilometers apart from one another. It was also found that the wall predates Genghis Khan rule and therefore wasn't actually built as a military defense against him. 6. The Amazon rainforest is turning into a grassland At first glance, satellite images of the Amazon rainforest show what appears to be a healthy, thriving jungle. But a study published earlier this year claims that upon taking a closer look, scientists determined that at least 75% of the rainforest is losing resilience. Simply put, vegetation is becoming drier and it's taking longer than it used to for it to recover from damage, even in the thickest areas. Authors of the study claim that the Amazon is nearing its tipping point, meaning there could soon come a time where plant life will no longer bounce back from disturbances. They believe that in just a few decades' time, more than half the rainforest could become a savanna. If that happens, there will be numerous and very serious consequences. It will dramatically accelerate climate change, alter regional weather patterns, and greatly harm biodiversity, according to the researchers. The Amazon has long been a so-called carbon sink, meaning that it helps keep the climate in check by absorbing billions of tons of carbon dioxide from the air, losing a substantial amount of the roughly 390 billion trees that make up the rainforest will result in a sudden and large release of carbon dioxide into the air. At the very least, it would essentially make it impossible for scientists to achieve society's goal of limiting global temperature rise to 
to 1.5 degrees Celsius, 2.7 Fahrenheit. The Amazon has existed for 55 million years. It survived through ice ages, sea level rise, and many wildfires. But human activity appears to be pushing it to its most perilous point of all time. Deforestation is a major factor in the rainforest decline. As more trees are cut down, less rain falls, and the rest of the rainforest becomes even drier, making it increasingly prone to wildfires and plant death. Researcher and mathematician Nicholas Bowe has likened the process to someone leaning back a little too far in a chair and falling backwards, and hearing it that way certainly conveys the seriousness of the problem. What kind of solutions can you come up with that could help save our planet's rainforests? Tell us in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. 5. Destroyed Villages in 2016, researchers with the non-profit Human Rights Watch identified three villages that had been burned almost completely to the ground in Burma's Rakhine state. By comparing satellite images from before and after the destruction, they found that 430 buildings had been razed, along with the trees surrounding them. The burnings were most likely carried out by the military as part of a long-standing conflict in Rakhine between ethnic Burmese and Bengali-speaking Rohingya minority, who have deep historical roots in the region but are classified as illegal immigrants by the government. Around the time the devastated villages were discovered in the satellite images, Burmese authorities announced that the military had killed 34 people who allegedly attacked first. Locals claimed that this was untrue and that the victims were unarmed civilians. Around 1 million Rohingya live in Myanmar, where many reside in displacement camps. They routinely experience things like hunger, attacks, and squalid living conditions. Many fled into the forest for safety amid the burning campaign, according to a school teacher in Rakhine who spoke with the Associated Press, AP. Brad Adams, who directs the Asia Division of the Human Rights Watch, told the news organization that the destruction was worse than investigators expected it to be. He urged the Burmese government to work with the United Nations to carry out an investigation into the matter, but it was a high hope to have in a country whose leader had been unable to stop the military from continuing to inflict violence on the Rohingya. Nearly a year later, satellite imagery showed that Rohingya settlements were still being burned down in Rakhine and that the military had destroyed 214 villages total. By that, tens of thousands of home had been reduced to ash and rubble, and at least 400,000 Rohingya Muslims had fled to neighboring Bangladesh, where they also hadn't exactly received a warm welcome. 4. North Korean Labor Camp in 2013, the Committee for Human Rights in North Korea Research Group released satellite images revealing the concerning growth of a forced labor camp along the country's northeastern coast. Known simply as Camp 25, it's one of the Hermit Kingdom's dozens of gulags. The photos showed that over a 10-year period, the property was expanded to include several new buildings and agricultural fields, along with nearly two dozen guards. Officials from Pyongyang have routinely denied that these types of camps exist in North Korea, but these and other satellite images point to the contrary. At the time the news broke of Camp 25's expansion, officials speculated it housed around 5,000 prisoners. Most inmates are sentenced to life, meaning that very few ever get a chance to talk about what goes on at these gulags. The first known escapee, Shin dong defected to South Korea in 2008 and opened up about the horrifying experience. But since this type of testimony is rare, technology plays a major role in uncovering North Korea's secrets, which include disturbing human rights violations. 3. 10 Cities in Ukraine Recently released satellite images captured by the company Planet Labs reveal a growing tent city in the Ukrainian town of Bezimen, which sits roughly an hour outside Russian-occupied Maripol. The photos show a long line of traffic stopped near the camp as Maripol residents relocate outside the besieged city. Makeshift settlements like these are being implemented by Russian forces. The camp at Bezimen consists of around 30 tents and is said to accommodate around 450 people. Ukrainian authorities claim that civilians are being sent to so-called filtration camps where the Russians are inspecting their phones and personal documents. The appearance of these 10 cities coincides with allegations that hundreds of thousands of civilians are being forcibly moved to remote cities in Russia. Meanwhile, Russian authorities claim that the camp at Bezimet was built as part of a convoy of humanitarian aid and that the civilians are receiving medical care, cell phones, and other necessities. Moscow insists that any civilian movement is voluntary and has criticized Ukrainian authorities for refusing to cooperate with the evacuations. An estimated 270,000 to 400,000 Ukrainians had relocated to Russia within a month of the invasion start, but their alleged reasons for moving differ depending on who you ask. And many people's fate and whereabouts remain a mystery, raising concerns about what may have happened to them. Two. Air quality is improving in some places and worsening in others. 
The Chinese capital of Beijing and the Indian capital Delhi have long been known for being two of the world's most polluted cities. Just a handful of years ago, both cities were roughly on par with their toxic air pollution levels. But Beijing's air quality has drastically improved in recent years, while Delhi's air pollution has only gotten worse despite authorities' attempts to combat the problem. In 2019, Delhi reached record levels of air pollution, leading to school closures and vehicle bans. Its toxicity was said to be the equivalent of smoking 50 cigarettes a day, often causing people's eyes to water and making it difficult even for those without any respiratory issues to breathe. A study published that year revealed that Beijing's air quality had dramatically improved, at least partially due to heightened regulations on a traditional practice called crop burning, which is now happening a lot less in the region than it used to. Meanwhile, in the areas surrounding Delhi, crop burning continues to be a major factor impacting air quality. Using satellite images, researchers identified far fewer crop burning fires around Beijing than in Delhi. They credited China's heavy-handed approach to regulating the practice for Beijing's impressive decrease in pollution, and noted that Delhi's less restrictive policies, which are only loosely enforced, are essentially failing to have an impact on the city's air quality. On the worst days, the tradition has been blamed for anywhere between 26 and 50 percent of the air's most harmful particulate matter. The study's authors concluded that in order to have any meaningful impact on pollution, Delhi will need to do a lot more than take action once the air gets dangerously toxic. In other words, they'll have to act sooner in an effort to prevent it from reaching that point. 1. Fake Aircraft Carrier Researchers and authorities alike were puzzled in 2014 when they discovered through satellite imagery that a replica of an American Nimitz-class nuclear-powered aircraft carrier was being built in an Iranian shipyard along the Persian Gulf. Analysts speculated that the fake ship might be blown up for propaganda or as target practice, according to the New York Times. In response, the Iranian media claimed that the vessel was being built as part of a movie set for a film about a passenger jet that was shot down by U.S. military members aboard the USS Vincennes in 19. 1988. The incident generated heated controversy as the US and Iran failed to come to an agreement on what caused the mishap. American officials claimed that the missile cruiser's crew had misidentified the aircraft as a jet fighter for the Iranian military and that they shot at it only after repeated attempts to communicate with the plane. Meanwhile, the Iranian government accused the Vincennes crew of negligently shooting down the aircraft, claiming that its crew was communicating on a civilian frequency. The ship's captain, William C. Rogers III, fell under heavy criticism for what many considered overly aggressive behavior, and then-President Ronald Reagan issued a diplomatic note to Iran, expressing deep regret over the tragedy. Late last year, satellite images revealed replicas of a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier and destroyer sitting on some railroad tracks in the desert of northwestern China. Experts believe that the mock-ups may have been built for target practice in preparation for a possible future clash between China and the US. Tensions between the two countries have increased noticeably in recent years. In the meantime, China has massively upgraded its military, leaving US officials concerned about what its future plans are. When asked about the images, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin claimed not to know anything and said that he hadn't seen the photos. It's entirely possible, or perhaps even likely, that he was lying and that this is just another item on a growing list of military developments that China is becoming concerningly secretive about. Thanks for watching. Which one of these discoveries shocked you the most? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.